A.N. Pryor became the founding father of modern tense logic. Since his teenage years, he had been interested in the topic of time. In particular, he focused on the logical consequences of the Christian doctrine of divine foreknowledge. He found that if God has complete foreknowledge of all future events, then there can be no human freedom of choice. Being a dedicated member of the Presbyterian Church, Pryor wanted to hold on to the doctrine of divine foreknowledge. Therefore, he had to deny that there is a human freedom of choice. But around 1950, Pryor started to question his argument against free choice. He found that he needed a formal tool that could provide a better analysis of the details in the argument. Looking for such a tool, Pryor got important inspiration from John Findlay, who had suggested a new logical formalism. Pryor developed Findlay's idea further and formulated a tense logic involving propositional operators like these. Pn for it was the case n days ago that, Fn for it will be the case in n days that, and L for it is necessary now unpreventable that. In addition, we need the operator M. It stands for it is possible that, and it is defined as it is not necessary that it is not the case that. Pryor presented his tense logic for the very first time in Wellington in August 1954. In June the same year, he wrote a letter about his ideas to his wife Mary, who was then in hospital. It is going to be a classic, he wrote, and it certainly was. Given such operators, it is possible to formulate the doctrine of divine foreknowledge in a rather precise manner. In fact, we can do a lot if we have just a small set of tense logical operators. According to Pryor, the doctrine of divine foreknowledge means that God knows and always has known every truth, including every true statement about the future. Actually, there are several versions of the argument from divine foreknowledge to the denial of human freedom. Here is one important version of the argument based on four premises. 1. If something is going to happen tomorrow, then God knew yesterday that it would take place in two days' time. 2. It necessarily follows that if God knew yesterday that some event was going to happen in two days' time, then that event will happen tomorrow. 3. If something was the case yesterday, then it is necessary, i.e. now unpreventable, that it was the case yesterday. In other words, the past is now unpreventable. 4. If a certain proposition necessarily follows from a necessary proposition, then it is itself necessary. It is now not difficult to follow the steps in this argument. We just have to make use of the four premises and some basic propositional logic, including substitution. Obviously, proposition 9 means that if something is going to happen tomorrow, then it is necessary, now unpreventable, that it happens tomorrow. It is simply impossible for it not to happen. This means that if God knew yesterday that I'm going to act in a certain way in two days, then it is not possible for me to do otherwise tomorrow. Hence, I have no freedom of choice. Is there any logical possibility of avoiding this conclusion? In fact, there is. In principle, one could deny the third premise, at least as it is used in step 7 in the argument. Pryor pointed out that this was exactly the way out suggested by the medieval logician William of Ockham. In terms of the tense logical formalism, this denial of step 7 means that the formula you see in red on the screen is conceivable. This means that even if God knew yesterday that I would perform Q in two days time, it might still be possible for me to make it true that God knew something else yesterday. That is, I could choose not to perform Q, but then I would also have made it true that God knew yesterday that I would not do Q in two days time. Pryor accepted that Occam's solution is conceptually possible, 
and he described it carefully. But personally, he did not like the idea that we, right now, today, can influence what God knew yesterday. In order to make room for human freedom, Pryor would rather question the doctrine of complete divine foreknowledge itself, and we'll come back to Pryor's own solution in another video. But many other logicians have been ready to pay the alchemistic price in order to hold on to the doctrine of complete divine foreknowledge. In fact, they have found Occam's solution very attractive, and they have developed it further in several ways.